Hello there and welcome to another video. Today we'll be talking about the cycle overload overclock. Strengths, weaknesses, builds, tips and tricks, when to use it, etc. For those of you who are here just for the build layout, timestamps below, hit that like button, it helps out the channel immensely. For everyone else, let's jump into it. Overload provides you with plus one damage and plus two rate of fire at the cost of an additional 0.5 seconds to your reload speed and 50% base spread. It's pretty damn good at killing tanks like Praetorians and Dreadnoughts as long as you can get close enough to them. It's also a fantastic overclock for those who get surprised and panic fire a lot. The sheer amount of DPS burst potential can dispatch slashes very, very quickly. Strengths, close range DPS through the roof. Weaknesses, anything past your beard will simply not notice your presence. Give me a sign. Not to mention that you consume ammo at an absurd rate. Why was 6 scared of 7? Because 7, 8, 11 shells in 2.4 fucking seconds mate. 7 being the cycle overload and 6 being your meager ammo count. With all that being said, let's jump into the first build. Dreadkiller. On tier 1 we take stuffed magazines, increases your clip size by 2, you'll be reloading less often and you'll have far more DPS burst potential in every clip. Dumping all of your ammo in one go is a serious concern with cycle overload. No really, you can quite easily dump 100% of your shotgun ammo into just one dread on a 4 man has 5 mission. So take ammo to prevent that from happening lest you be at the mercy of RNG mini waves or worse. Your team. Tier 3, clip size to maximise the damage dump potential. Tier 4, take damage as it's the only real choice you have on that tier. Tier 5, take full auto to maximise your DPS as well. Tips and tricks. Tap fire as much as possible to conserve ammo. It can be tempting to hold left click, only do so on massive waves and or massive targets, lest you run out of ammo sooner than you expected. Number 2, full auto at close range. Number three, take dash to reposition. You should always be taking dash regardless, but it's even more important on cycle overload. Tip number four, reload cancelling is even more effective on cycle overload, shaving off a total of 46% with a frame perfect cancel, and if not, more around the 40% mark. More reason to not take the reload mod. My platform guide has an animation cancelling section, so do go check that out if you are interested in cancelling reload animations. Tip number five, if you are ever faced against Mactel with this build, Carl have mercy on your soul, the only thing you can do is hit them with your secondary, or commit, get close and jump fire at the Mactera. For elimination missions this build is pretty damn good, I wouldn't recommend it in any other mission type though, the lack of range really can hurt you when facing most enemies, notably Spitters, Menaces and Mactera spawn for example. The Warthog is fairly accurate for a video game shotgun. Yes, I know, and relies on juicy weak point hits to work well, so bear that in mind before you decide to go from TF2 Sniper to Stevie Wonder. The Sacrilege build. Let's jump into the changes. On tier 2, we'll be taking Choke to offset the abysmal base range of Cycle Overload, and then on tier 5, we'll be taking Turret Whip as we already have plenty of rate of fire with this overclock. What we are left with here is an alternative form of the Warthog. Single fire, massive clip size and lots of burst potential. Also, here's the turret build you'll need with this one. Gemini, because it's simply OP. Quick deploy so you can set up and relocate during waves. Stun to make the front of the wave cluster up more for juicy whip shots. And lastly, Defender, obviously. Tips and tricks. Number one, wait for your turrets to begin firing at a target before whipping. That way you know it's aiming at the target, mostly. Number two, make sure the targets are running towards the turrets so they don't dodge whip shots. So placement is absolutely key here. Lastly, if it's just a single grunt, save your ammo, use power attacks if you can, and if not, do avoid full auto when possible. One more bonus tip, you can hit multiple turrets with the same shell to proc whip shots, including other engineers turrets, and this can help you save your shotgun ammo and increase your burst potential. I recommend this build for all mission types except drill dozer missions, as you are constantly moving, making it hard to use rip, rip? Making it hard to use whip reliably during the traveling phase. So do bear that in mind. Something you can do, and I have done personally, is I face the turrets towards the direction of travel, and then you get more use out of your turrets and you don't have to spend as much time relocating them. So should you use cycle overload? Yes, you absolutely should. The sheer amount of DPS and clip burst potential make it a worthwhile pickup. So do try it out, even if it's just once on a scout main. Fun, 
even if it isn't meta. And the same goes for cycle overload as well. I'll see you all in the next video. Catch you later. <laughs> Another successful mission. Good job, everyone.